Well, welcome everyone. Hopefully this is the last Zoom meeting before we get into regular meetings again in 2022. Um, keep our fingers crossed there. Okay, um, start with apologies and leave of absence. So, no apologies. I'll put uh, in apologies for Rungu. Normally she's pretty good at letting us know, so I'll, I'll put, put her apologies in. Okay. Can I have a mover and a second for those? Jack and someone else want to be seconder, please. I think I saw Vanessa. Okay, you have to can't see Vanessa, ma'am. Thanks, Vanessa. Okay, uh, confirmation of status of agenda. Um, I presume everyone's read their agenda. Uh, cover mover and seconder. Yep, happy to move. So, Eugene and Curry. Um, have we got any disclosure of interest? I think, um, Vanessa, I might just ask you to put on disclosure of interest because we'll briefly discuss um, the end of summer market that will replace the Christmas. Oh, yeah, no problem. That's fine. Okay. And I'll have one too for that then because I'll have a stall there as well. Thanks, Diane. Okay. Um, can someone confirm the minutes, please? Eugene and yep. Kerry, thanks. Okay, um, we've got no public forum. I just wonder, um, there were a couple of things I've had, um, had calls from, um, which we could talk about now or bring it up in, um, uh, later on in the agenda. I think we'll bring, bring it up now. One is, um, was the movement, um, the... Um, Christmas market was canned because of COVID, and um, Anne has asked me to if we can look at potential funding the um, end of summer market um, to the same extent. Uh, would if, could we um, have a mover that if we I presume we need to move and second that um, movement of the funds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you um, explain to me what you what you're talking about there? Oh, okay. So we'd put um, two thousand nine hundred dollars or thereabouts um, to, for the Christmas market uh, that was being run by the community house. Yep. They have um, cancelled it because of COVID, and they're now putting looking at putting one on the end of March um, as an end of summer market. Um, and Anne has asked that we um, that, that the money that we had put up for the Christmas market is transferred uh, to the um, to the um, end of summer market. I can move that if you want. Yeah. Um, I, I totally support that because we've already allocated the funds towards them for Christmas. The event's been cancelled, but the a new event further on down the line is again in support of our community. So I definitely, if we're allowed to transfer the funds from this event to that one, that's already been approved. And yep. Thanks, Kerry. Uh, Janet? A uh, question. So can I ask um, whether it's the same budget? Is it the same exact information um, that we were provided for the Christmas parade or the Christmas market? Is it exact same information, which would be the summer one? It would be virtually the same. It's, again, for the traffic management. I think the uh, – Vanessa might be able to tell me it's still being held in <coughs> Barton Street, Vanessa? Yes, it's still going to be in Martin Street. The funding was for the traffic management and road closure. So it's just, we will still have to do that for the summer one. Okay. I'm happy to second that, um, but I just think we should put it under the discretionary funding item rather than in the public forum, just when we do the minutes. Yeah, that's more appropriate. Okay. And the second one was also similar. It was um, for the high school for the um, entranceway sign. Uh, because of school holidays, they've asked to have it rolled over to next year. So should we bring that up to discretionary as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah p possibly, but I don't think there's a time limit on our commitment. We made a commitment no. and it's in there anyway. So I don't think that's, um, we can make a note of that, but I don't think it needs a mover or a seconder because they have to provide receipts or something to get the money anyway, or invoices, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll move on then um, to narrow his security cameras. Vanessa, would you like to talk to it first? Oh, 
Okay, as we know, we haven't had any um, going cameras in, in, in town for quite some time. So we have spoken about how security is one of the key issues that the community has um, discussed. And I think we've all been aware there's been a few incidents of late. Um, so Andrew from Cornerstone Security has, who originally did them and does work for the council on um, on the um, cameras around in Huntley, um, Raglan, Tiki Fodder areas. He's given us a quote and looked at the current state of the cameras and what we would need to do to uh, get them all up and running and upgrade them with the new policing um, live progress. And I have sent it out and I think you've all got it. So um, Andrew was keen to, to answer any questions if anybody had any, but nobody seems to have had any. So I assume everybody understood what was what his quote was about. Nobody's got any questions on it? Curry. Sorry, I have I have no issues with the quote. I was more curious about the angle of the cameras on River Road intersection. The River Road, um, Great South Road one. Yep. Yeah. Or is it just basically just to get the quote through, not necessarily the direction the cameras will be facing? Um, yeah, I think it was just going to be a three-way, so it, it yeah. was going to have the direction of either way of Great South Road and down River Road. And okay, by doing point. that one, we could do away with, I think, options of well, step six, which was um, the hotel market, market Street um, Road pole, because that camera would still cover the same area, the new camera on, on the corner of River Road and Great South Road. Okay, yep. Um, a question, uh, the question was about the one, <coughs> excuse me, on Waipa, um, the Waipa Bridge, Waipa River Bridge. <coughs> I yeah, we did discuss that with him, and it was in the earlier quote. It's not in this one. And I think that was because we would have to get a hold of well to see if we can A, use their pole and B, tap, in, tap into their electricity, um, which um, we will, yeah, but, but it is something that can be added in later. Yep. And um, talking to Leanne yesterday afternoon, it's possible that um, we could possibly go to World Trust or someone to, to fund that as an extra camera, especially if we've paid for the rest of, the, um, of that setup. Yeah. Uh, have we got anyone else? Janet. Uh, not a question about the quote as such, but just about our money. Um, so it's sort of double what we thought it might be. Are we just going to take that money out of our fund and reduce something else? Or what, what are we going to do with the difference? I think um, we could take it out of Mana Tarangi, to Mana Tarangi um, reserve money that would put, because um, we've got quite a bit of money sitting there. Um, Eugene. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just scratching my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple of questions, but um, yeah. In your question. So what would the process be to do that and repurpose that um, fund if we were to do that? We can just do that in discretionary uh, when we come to that. Cool. Awesome. I think it's a good idea to move those funds around because we need to look like we're spending this money and we can always, you know, put it back later if that's what we want to do. But looking like we're actively spending money rather than hoarding money is, is a good thing. I think of the 45000 if we spend that on the cameras, um, we've still got 20000 If we take 20000 out of um, Tamano Tarangi, Reserve, and then we've still got twenty thousand for the remainder of the year. So um, I think it's pretty. So, just a question about the GST then. So um, because we go through council for this, do we? So we're, the GST portion, which is nearly seven thousand, does that come back? I mean, well, I, I'm, will it? Oh, it, it, it should do if you did normal transaction. If you pay GST, you get it back. So that should happen. So if we if we paid fifty one nine hundred, we should get that 
six, seven hundred back. Should come yeah, but back who gets it back? Does well, the community we, we, board get it back or the council get it back? Well, <laughs> I would say that we should get it back. Um, it's it come back. out. We, we've paid. We've paid the, the community board paid the GST, so the GST should come back to us. Yeah, the um, discretionary so, fund is GST exclusive anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I just thought it was worth raising that because that's yeah. a fish hook that we might come back and bite us. Yeah. Eugene. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, just wanted to, um, sorry, I did probably miss that email um, about questions to, is it Andrew? Um, I was hoping that he might have been here tonight to answer a few questions. So um, if we went ahead with the whole lot, um, as he set, he sectioned them off, um, those quotes. Now, um, doing it all together should be saving them a, a lot of time and money as well. Have, can we go back to them and try to screw them down a bit more? Yeah, I agree um, with that. Because um, if we just pick sections one to four, it's the same price as us doing the whole lot if you take each each compartment and do it. Um, 45K is worth of work and there's a fair bit of labour cost and their cost in there. And we're now hiring equipment uh, to do the poles and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there should be a saving there um, that we should be able to get. So... Um, I'd like to try that. I'm happy to do it, and I believe we need to do the whole lot. But um, yeah, that was pro it was probably my fault that I didn't um, get back to you, Vanessa, about questions. But I thought it would have been good if he was here tonight to answer some. Um, and one of the other things was how future proof is that this, and how easy it is to add on. Because even though it's got a pretty good coverage, there's still some areas in town that could be done as well, so. Um, yeah, I'm happy to flick him an email about um, a, a cost to, or a reduction in cost to do the whole lot at once. And um, I, I don't know if it was on this mail or the previous email, there is something about, sorry, I'm just looking for it now. There was something about the, about it being like anything I think technology wise will have to be upgraded at some sort of position but because they're looking at the new police vibe system which is what the police are using at the moment or just all upgrading to and, and now putting the whole centre back down to Wellington for all of this um, yeah it should be easy enough to upgrade as required so, so Vanessa, the, this system's the one that um, I think in the Huntley one that they're setting up is that if there's an incident and there's a local police, he could go into his phone or his iPad yeah. and, and bring that information up. Yeah, so they're all, um, all the new cameras now, which is part of this change of um, policy with, with Wellington, um, they will all be accessible through their phones yeah, cool. and have live feeds. I think um, Eugene, with the way he's priced it as well, um, he had he's done an add-on onto the existing, if we, like if we go one to five or whatever. He's mm. added on a certain amount for of the labour, and so there's I don't know that we've got a, a much chance of getting a, um, a cut price, but we can always ask. Yeah, we can always I think ask. we can always ask. I mean, yeah. if we can yeah. save a couple of green, that's a couple of green we can spend on a. Another application with a community group. Yep. Worth a try. Whenever okay. I quote something, I always get screwed, try to get screwed down a bit. So, yeah. That's the way it is. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Especially saying we're only getting one quote, we're not getting multiple yeah. quotes for the same work. Mm. You don't ask, you don't get. Exactly. Yeah. Kitty's got a hand out. Well. Sorry, I just want to add my five cents to this corridor. In terms of uh, totally, total the that we should just fund the whole thing in one go so it's all done and we have a start date for when these things need to be reviewed and probably quite possibly three to four years and at least we know where the start date is for the whole system. The other thing too is if we do take the putia, because we do have putia that's sitting there, but remember it has already been allocated and that is public knowledge. 
So we just need to be mindful that we also, if we are taking from Te Mano Te Rangi Reserve, that we can only take what we've put in from this committee, from this term, and that we make a commitment and there's somewhere in the minutes that we continue to replenish that fund, which is previously we've done 10K at a time. This board has committed 20K and now we're taking it back. Yes, it's money sitting there doing nothing, but the reason being is that when time comes to do something, that there is enough putia to start the foundations of that project off. So I'm just being mindful. Yes, I total for that putia coming across to support this kaupapa, but that we also make sure that it's very clear in there that us, our community board needs to replenish that putia as well. Yes, you can. Sorry, Jen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just um, <clears throat> probably following on from Kitty's um, comments is that um, if there was stuff put, a, uh, put there before, um, tagged for something before this board, um, it's this board's decision, it's this board's discretionary money. We can move whatever we like the whole lot. Um, also, whether we've got 10 grand or 40 grand or 100K in the Tamano Tarangi, if we've got that tagged out, whatever that is, it's only a drop in the ocean of what the whole big picture is. So, yep. um, you know, we do <clears throat> a few, some some dollars in there to move things along and maybe kickstart things, but, you know, that's going to be probably like in a few millions of dollars sort of thing, um, projects. So, yeah, as long as we've got something something in there, so we're, we're acknowledging it. Um, and I think at the end of the day, the community... Uh, pretty well aware that Tamano Tarangi is, is a big project um, and we're using our money in a better way to get something for the community now, not in five years' time or whatever. So, um, that, yeah, that's just more of a comment on that. Can I have someone move that we um, go ahead with the... Um, oh, oh, sorry, so we... just one more question sorry. was, um, so going ahead... Um, Vanessa, is, is Anne still on that trust, um, the security camera trust? Because who takes care of the maintenance and repairs of this going forward? That's something we will need to, to look at as well. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure on what is happening with that trust, so, with the camera so, trust at the moment. So I... Oh, sorry, sorry, Eugene. Because it's me. It's meant to um, change over with the elections. Um, the councillors and different people are meant to change out with each every three year period. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just sometimes that camera trust has been working good, and then other times it's pretty dysfunctional and nothing happens at all. Yeah. And so we probably need a bit of clear because we can be doing this, and then if we don't have much money in three years time or you know like as, as the funding pools change we don't have much money in three years time then we're sitting there with 45 grand's worth of investment um that's all broken and that'll probably come back and bite us or bite this group because we're committed to that and didn't look at the long-term um long-term picture so i believe that these would end up being vested into the trust so then the trust are responsible for them I would yeah, think that, yeah, that would be the case. Yeah, yeah. So, so I really, really support this. I think cameras are, are, are very important, and I think security and people want that. But I, my concern is we just haven't tied up a few loose ends. Mm. That's my concern. So how about I, – I did speak to Anne yesterday about the maintenance program. She, said, she did say to me that um, with, like, Raglan um, – Raglan brought the cameras and everything, but the camera trusts do the maintenance. Um, but there's a bit of a, a disconnect at the moment with things. Um, and she suggested that that would be the best way to do it was to follow Raglan's plan, how they had done it. Um, she was going to follow that up for me, but has, hasn't heard anything back yet. And, um, yeah, I'll also ask Andrew with with the email about um, any reduction in, in costs with doing it all in one go, what he sees as the first sort of steps with maintenance and cameras and things. So we can put that all in the, all in the one thing. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, I'd like that. What does a camera trust actually do? Um, question. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question, Jack. Um, but the Canberra Trust is supposed to be set up um, to um, apply for funding and receive funding to for security camera projects and keep keep them maintained up to scratch, etc. Going forward, because a lot of these community more there's more communities want to be doing what we're doing here. And um, to be honest, I, I I think it's just been floundering really. Um, I don't know. Janet, do you or Kurt, do you know much more about that? But I, I just don't think it's gained momentum. I don't even know if they've been applying for funding over the over the um, over the last three or four years. I think that they their last project was Huntley, um, sorting that out. And I, I honestly don't know how they work, they, mm. and I don't know who they apply to actually, yeah. because we could have thought about applying maybe to some. Body to help us fund this mm -hmm. but, yeah mm, well energy trust may have been a good um, funder to approach in particular mm. so I, I, I did did approach jan sedwick who's who's the chair of the camera trust about it um they are using all of that for those avenues to get this done their work done up in tikifora is apparently tikifora are the ones they're concentrating on to words were that Ngāra here is not on the radar for any work to be done. So, yeah, so it's it's that that's that's their funding that they're using at the moment, the funding avenues that the trust is using at the moment for those things. Yeah. I'll just <clears throat> suggest uh, Councillor Patterson's comments there about just satisfying yourselves around the, the process of the trust, um, the because this is a significant capital investment and that the you understand the depreciation component is there going to be funds there when they reach end of life and is there funds there to uh yeah for the maintenance um etc replacement if, if um damage so um because it is a significant investment for mm -hmm. the for the town and we don't want them to start disappearing and they're not coming back so it'd be just to be some sort of comfort in how that process will work and if it does require funds from ongoing funds from the community board then you can actually plan to put that aside yeah, so so that's a good point, Kurt. So it's a significant uh, asset. So if it's vested in the trust or the council, would it be covered by insurance? Because I just wonder, it may be it's better to, to see if we can vest them in council as assets. Maybe we need to say that in principle we agree, but we've got a couple of questions to ask first about insurance and does the camera trust have insurance over their current cameras? Does the count, would the council, for example, then um, would it fit into our assets? Um, if it's vested in council, would it be covered by our insurance? So something, do you know, Kurt? Uh, no, I've, I've just been making contact with um, oh. Ellis, Ellison. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as uh, yeah, from both from that procurement vesting of of asset as and she is involved in the um the camera trust as well sort of thing so we can follow up, get answers to all of these questions we're asking so if we don't go ahead and approve this i'll note that the resolution only says to note the report but if we don't approve this tonight um we can't get them installed and we if our next meeting is probably February, I think, March, February. Um, it's going to take a while to get things moving, isn't it? But I guess we need the answers first. The other thing is, are they, if, if, even if we do approve this tonight, are they going to be all installed and up and running before February anyway? Probably not. Probably not. No, I wouldn't think no. so. Yeah. No. Look, look I, 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 I really, really want to get this done. But I just do have concerns um, with a couple of bits and pieces. And, you know, I think we all just, we none of us are sure how this trust thing works and whether, you know, it's vested in them or, as Janet said, in, in council, whether it's one of the one of both anyway. So um, I think maybe we could follow some of that information up. I don't mind trying to follow that up. And with Kurt and um, check out, Alison's probably definitely the right person to go to around those finances and, and if that's the case, we just get on with it in February in our first meeting and go for it. Yep. 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 So everyone's in favour of just rolling it over to the February meeting and um, 
making a final decision with um, all the information together? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we'll do that then. Thank you. You can pass the whole of the pages. Okay, the discretionary fund, is there anything else that needs to be discussed on that? Oh, we're going to talk about um, the um, <clears throat> summer market. Um, as part of the discretionary fund, <clears throat> excuse me. So currently we've got $2,912 um, for the Christmas market. Um, can someone propose that we um, roll that over for the end of summer market, please? Yeah, I, I move there. thanks. And a seconder. Eugene, thanks. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Right. So that's done. Do you think that we should um, make a decision on moving money around regarding the cameras um, come February? Leave it for now? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Can I add for the discretionary fund if we can... Um, moves that we support a 50% of the swimming pool costs for this year, or for the next summer term? Yes. Yep. We, we haven't had an account from um, at all from um, Belgravia <clears throat> for this last year, so I don't know where it, that stands. Mr Chair, Mr Chair, it does say further in the agenda and the works and issues, I think it is, um, that uh, invoice was provided by Belgravia, but it was incorrect. So we've been asked to resubmit that, but we've been asked to resend that out, which we haven't received yet. Oh, okay. Um, and also, thanks, Kitty, for um, bringing that up because um, I told Grant Searle from <laughs> that we were going to do that. So thank God. <laughs> I wasn't, I and sorry, we have that. spoken about it at our yeah, um, meeting. We, we just haven't yeah. officially done it at this. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. 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 We've all agreed to it verbally. It's just in yeah. the minutes. Thanks, Kerry. Cool. So Thank we're you. probably rolling over still on that original 10,000. I don't yeah. know. Do we know how much their um, invoice was from Belgravia this time? No. No, no. Uh, it was, I think it, uh, from memory, someone said about two to two and a half thousand. I don't think it was more than that. Yeah. But there are, there are amounts in there for 2020. Um, so there's it looks like but, it's been taken out for the previous summer. Yeah, we finally got the previous summer's ones. I had to chase them up several times, but they've changed staff. I've got no contact with them, so I haven't been able to chase them up. Yeah. Also, am I able to note um, that we make sure that when we do discuss with them that they need to be aware that the inflatable belongs to the Ngarawahia Community Board? and that they must not be charging groups to hire it. All right, Mr. Chair, can I just check? Um, I don't know whether that's quite right because that money was, um, Belgravia bought that out of our profit loss um, or pain gain something, Kurt, I think we had a, like a pain gain contract. And so Belgravia purchased that to place it not all here but the community board's never paid a single cent for that inflatable at all. And um, it's to stay here, but, uh, you know, in, in reality, um, if Belgravia do own that, that could be moved around to any of the pools that they, um, between us, Tuaco and um, Huntley. It will probably always stay here, but, um, yeah, I'm just not too sure that we actually own it. I think it's Belgravia. And I think we need to follow that up because yeah. that's what I've we've been advised by. Even um, Wendy Diamond and them have said this that it was purchased through. Well, yeah, that's what I've been told previously. So, yeah, yeah. Just just another point about the cost. Um, when they have it there, they do need an extra lifeguard 
as well. So it, there's a little bit of, it's a bit more complicated, I think, to make sure they cover the cost of the extra lifeguard, but I'm not sure how they work that. It's just something to do with um, the health and safety side. Well, one of the things I was also discussing was the potential for uh, people to, for later than five o'clock, um, till the six o'clock like we did last year. Um, I don't know if we ever got any figures back. They were meant to keep figures on the number of people who were coming in or staying till six o'clock at night. Um, have we? I don't know that we've ever had anything back from them. Having said that, Mr. Chair, um, the we've got a um, email from Grant. What's his last name? Sir. Sir. Uh, yeah. And they are proposing to stay open quite often till six o'clock. Um, and the new and those times are going out in the community news, uh, Narawahi community news. Um, right. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of the days be, over the summer and until six, Eugene. That's right, isn't it? You're on mute, Eugene. Sorry, I think the six o'clock closing starts just after, uh, I think maybe Boxing Day, is it? Um, and you close on the first and second and then right through to the end of um, summer to closing, it's open till six. Okay. Which is good because last year we agreed to fund that extra hour and this year Belgravia is taking that on. So it was going to be till 5pm 5, 5 and I asked Grant if he could go back to Belgravia and look at six o'clock and so... Maybe they had to work with their staffing, et cetera, but they've agreed to do it till six o'clock um, come Boxing Day or something like that, or the 27th, yeah. Just Which is good point. because I think that, that definitely helps. And, um, uh, you know, I think you have to vacate the pool quarter of an hour earlier. So, you know, quarter to five, three o'clock to quarter to five, and it's not much no. time, so... Yeah. I think ultimately, which we didn't get quite over the line this time, was um, you know having it demand locally uh, mm -hmm. by locals. Um, I think we definitely need to keep pushing that for the next season. But um, uh, you know, there's people that ask about being able to go down here and swim in the mornings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, currently we won't be able to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Roger. Um, just in um, regard <laughs> to accessing um, the public facilities, in particular the um, pools around um, COVID passes, how's that going to be working and how's that going to be operating for vaccinated um, and unvaccinated? It's just a question. I'm just curious. It's a good question, Mungu, and um, I think we should ask Kurt to answer it because he's probably a bit more <laughs> onto it than Eugene and I. We could oh. give an answer and he'd probably just correct us. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so <clears throat> councillors may not be aware of this yet, but uh, the 13th um, of December that there will be a paper or report in front of council um, discussing that. So you may be aware um, today um, Hamilton City has just come out with facilities, all their facilities, pools, libraries, etc. being vax pass um, requirement for, for entry. So that's something we haven't landed on um, as, and it will be a council decision, council laws. Um, so that paper's been put together um, at the moment and will be in front of council very shortly. Thank you. Yeah, I can, I can probably say that as my opinion and a couple of others that we know of, um, councillor-wise, we believe that we should all be um, double vaxxed in any council premises, but it hasn't gone through officially. Um, so that's not um, a dead cert at this point. Um, and it's, it's, I think, reading the Hamilton City Council uh, paper that went up, people will have to show their vaccine passport for any council facility, including pools and um, libraries and the museum. But as Kurt said, we haven't had the official um, sign-off by all the councillors and the mayor. But my gut feel, my gut feel off the record is that that will be probably very similar to that. Thank you. Yep. Including meetings like with community board, community committees, council, anything that's face to face is um, so. Yeah, 
So if, if the vote came out that way, I think you'll find Eugene and I, right, Eugene, would be mm. voting that way. Mm. Is that right, Eugene? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't mind hearing what um, these the community board's views are. Be pretty Can good. I just add, um, sorry, so I sit on a chair of, of another organisation where we were affected by the mandate. Um, the people that that area works with and obviously will be attending our pool are the ones that are under age to get vaccinated. So 11 and under are probably our most vulnerable, but be aware, please, when you go through the process, the decision-making process that we suffered a drowning last summer. So of an adult um, saving a child, and it's really important that whether or not we get high numbers through our swimming pool or not, that we still make sure that it's available. And our community is quite a, a, a community that is in need as well. There's, there's a lot of people that do rely on those services and would possibly use them more since the yep. recent events. So just being aware and know that you guys will make the best decision for our community. Kia ora. So do we want a quick run around? To me, um, the VAX pass makes sense. Um, yeah, um, Rungo, what do you think? I took took with the VAX pass too. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Jack, yeah, yes, yeah. oh, that's right. That. Diane, yeah, I'm good with the VAX pass. Vanessa, yep, I'm good with the VAX pass. And have I missed anyone? Seem to have well, Kerry, Kerry, maybe another question. Yep. I know. So I didn't say, yep, I am, I've got my vaccination. I support that. And I'm probably as the district next to Auckland, very nervous about when the borders open. Yep. Um, yep. But know that I needed to make sure that I can go to Auckland to see my niece and nephews. So we are fully supportive <coughs> of vaccination and ensuring that our legacies live on. Right. I didn't miss anyone else, did I? But, okay. Right. Um, one other question. Um, while I've got Eugene, um, is there any word on the new sign for the pool? Um, no, I can. Um, there was. Um, they were going to do a big, huge timber one, and I think the cost was um, not quite in the budget, but they were going to get one made up. Um, I'm still hoping we could get a timber one. Uh, you know, like a big solid slab. Oh, okay. of, um, of timber would be pretty cool. Um, I have seen them around in a few places and they do look neat. I'll, I'll follow that up with Grant because I did raise that with him um, some weeks back when he was getting the pool, when the pool was getting painted or we were organising it, the pool painted. So I did raise that with him because it hadn't been done. I'll flick an email out to, to our board. Okay, thank at you. The end of the week. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, um, we'll move on. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. We didn't get a mover and seconder for the pools. So if Kerry I can just and clear. Vanessa. Okay. I can't see everyone. So. <laughs> All right. All in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay. I had a look at the um, dog park um, parking today. Um, looking really good. The only comment was there was a lady down there and said the seal gets really hot for her dog's feet. <laughs> I don't know how we get around that. Um, and she said, no, she couldn't pick up her dog. It was too big. <laughs> the other work that seems to be going on is um, a new sewer line uh, from Lower Waikato Esplanade, which is going to replace the one that runs under the um, Waikato River Bridge and then goes up Great South Road and then the end ends up at the at the um the wastewater uh, treatment uh, ponds. So um that's what the fencing was done on um the reserve area just um north of the Waikato River Bridge. So that works in progress and HEP construction are doing it. Kurt, did you have anything to bring up from those minutes? No, no. Um, the the Belgravia one was one of the 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 key components in here requesting the 
amendment to the invoice. Um, it was an action in last minute, um, last meeting minutes around the, you know, just ensuring that the Prairie Bridge lighting is secured, made, made safe well, from, <clears throat> um, from theft and that has, has, has been um, considered in the design. Uh, so yeah, that's really the major updates. Okay, thank you. Uh, schedule of meetings for 2022. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, Eugene. sorry Mr. Chair. Um, just following on, it's not in here, but um, if you go through town near and you can see that Kiwi Royal have replaced that yep. fence, that chain link fence through town, um, which is looking really good. And City Care have started, um, along with our staff with Kim Wood, um, to plant all right down through there down to the bus shelter. Um, with appropriate shrubs and plants so you can still, because I've had feedback where people are coming across the railway lines, railway lines to Great South Road, it's, they're really happy now because the, you've got better lines of sight, Yep. which actually makes it safer. So Kim's well aware to not put big, huge, bloody trees in there that are going to take that away in the in the future. So um, it's been a good, good um, working relationship with Kiwi Rail because if they didn't put that fence up, you have to go through a process of being able to work close to the tracks, which could take you months and months. So it was good. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, I've got no report as such. We, um, Vanessa, Diane, Jack and myself and Leanne from council staff um, actually met up outside the um, roller doors yesterday evening and we're throwing some more ideas around. Um, especially with the wording of Narawahia. So um, we've taken some measurements of the doors and um, I've left it in Vanessa's hands at the moment to um, just ask a sign writer the best format we could, you know, from a professional aspect um, for doing that word. There's 11 doors, but um, the letter I and um, some of the doors are wider than others. So um, we'll come back um, to everyone. I think once we've got a little bit more information and then look at in the new year, as to how we're going to put a competition out to um, to do it. But um, a couple of ideas that we were throwing around last night was to have um, along the base of probably the bottom five to 600 millimetres, a, um, now what was it, what was the word we used, Vanessa, for the that panel? Um, oh, I can't remember, but having some type of like, um, what's the board you know some pattern along the bottom like a like curry and, yeah. and all that sort of oh god something. it's completely gone yeah. yeah we did talk about you know the hakri mata the the skyline if you could run something like that along somewhere perhaps as well along the top edge we were looking at that um yeah. because it, when the doors are up there's always a piece showing we thought if it if it's a band about 600 that could be done um and something that um, really fits with the town. And when they're all down, um, we might have a word with a councillor who's got a um, air, air, airless sprayer and possibly look at getting um, some sky or something painted along the, the top edge so that we don't have to have whoever's painting it sitting uh, up too high on scaffold. Um, some of those doors, I think the highest was 2.7 metres, I think. No, so, yes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, well, it was 3.2, was it? It was, went right up to about 3, 4, I think. It was very high. Yeah, it was pretty those. high. But, so we need yeah. something, some colour along the top edge that um, for when the doors are down. Um, but we'll look at that in the new year but in a bit more detail. But it was mm -hmm. a really good chance for the four of us to just toss some ideas around and standing there and getting some idea. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was it something around the bottom area being connected to the Tupuna Awa Waikato in the way that anything like that? Yep. Yeah. If, oh. if we've done the whole band, say six hundred high from the ground oh. up, um, yeah, um, we we would be able oh. to some, okay. some yeah some real good ideas from yourself and Curry and anyone that you think should be really involved so that um, yeah we don't want to stand on anyone's toes but we want something that would look um, yeah, so when the doors are up, you still have that band across. And when the doors are down, it, it would be a continuous band right around the, you know, the bottom of the doors. So that, that was the thoughts 
what we were thinking. So, um, but we'll work, we'll work a bit more of that in the new year. Um, we'll start workshopping it a bit more and um, then we'll, yeah, to take that next step. All right, can I add, um, I thought we were going to do a competition as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. it sounds like there's a lot of ideas already there. <laughs> I suppose well, it gives us a good uh, base foundation for them to create their their wonders with. The other one yeah. too is I can also ask the guys that painted it last time, uh, which is Calvin Maru and Noel Reed. Uh, what did they do when they did it? <laughs> yeah, I'm well, pretty sure all... they didn't have scaffolding, but they did think, paint it yeah, all things... from top to bottom, <laughs> each, each one. And things have changed a bit. And if we're going to have the school kids doing it, um, we're thinking – they can probably have it up to about a 1200 high scaffold and work on that. So that gives up to two, two and a half meters, something like that from the ground up for where they can paint. Um, we really like your idea with the word narrow here. Um, there's actually 14 doors um, and the I and the A probably would fit on one of the other, other 10 doors because of it. Yeah. So that's why we thought we'll just, if we can get someone to, who's a professional just to quickly sketch up um, how each of those letters would look um, before we, you know, otherwise we could end up with something that really just looks um, a mess. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm really keen on the idea. Um, and then the panels on the shop closest to the bakery, whatever it is, closest to the, the um, Z service station, would have, that would be all around that um, corner. Um, and that could be something just totally artistic as well. So, um, yeah, the discussion was was very evolving yesterday, and um, yeah, we really wanted the whole whole board to get together and then just start finalising some ideas. But yeah, Kitty, one of, one, of, one of the reasons we talked about like having a border at the top and bottom was because of the different heights of the boards, and to put it out as a competition to to be fair, we probably needed to make sure everybody had the same size space to, to work on. So yeah, and I'm saying if we you said, okay, your space to do your idea is, is like, you know, two meters square, um, then you have this gap up and above and the bottom, then what do we do with that? Because that would then not make the, the mural whatever look good. Yeah. Which is what has what, what, what it was before. There was a band mm. of sky and ground and then the, yep. the images were in circles placed strategically along the middle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll, if, when we do meet, I'll invite one of those guys to come to our workshop to share some light and maybe do some sketches for us. Mm -hmm. I can see the reasoning that they used it because by doing the way they did it, they would have been able to get along quite quickly and have done those three bands and then worked around the various businesses to do the other. Um, like the um, laundromat's open for big hours, so when we were given a chance to actually paint a group to paint that, so it could be, yeah. Um, so there's a whole lot of things that we started realising if we're going to have, have quite a bit of decoration done on these doors, um, it's got to be really well planned for time so but yep yeah, so we'll follow that through in the new year okay um eugene have you got anything from council's point of view um no i mean it's been similar to this um plenty of zoom meetings and workshops um janet's um strategy and finance committee yesterday uh, we've got infrastructure tomorrow, which is a reasonable amount on there. But a lot of it is just um, FYI and updating all the councillors on what's happening around the waters, etc. You've mentioned already before that probably the main thing when waters in Ngunnawahi, for instance, is the um, replacing of the pipe under the bridge, which is quite a big project. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, not that I can think of anything. Awesome. Janet? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to highlight that as of tomorrow, um, there's consultation out there for the speed limit bylaw, the dog control bylaw, the Easter trading, um, and it's all on the website. And it would be really good if the community board put a submission into each one of those. Okay. So I know that this is the last meeting, um, but 
um, maybe via a email or, a, or an off council Zoom meeting we can have, or you can have, because Eugene and I shouldn't be involved in what you decide. Um, you need to really, with the speed limit bylaw, just check the Narawa here um, proposed map for the speed limits. And if you agree, well, at least put in that you agree because we tend to only get submissions from people who don't agree, but we need to have a balance of those that agree as well. Um, so, you know, that's really important. Um, and also with the dog bylaw, there's off-leash and on-leash changes. So that affects Narawa here as well. ESA trading is pretty much status quo. Um, we're allowing it um, and it's really at the discretion of the business because we, especially under COVID, we felt, um, you know, we can't restrict economic development. And, and effectively, it's mainly Raglan businesses that open over Easter. It's really not the, the other towns. Um, but I think it's important that you guys do, if you do nothing else, <laughs> in the next week or so, have a look at the, um, those two, the speed limit and the dog bylaw definitely changes in our town for that. Um, Rongu, you walk dogs, <laughs> so you know, might need to have a good look at that so yep. you can see what really, yeah. I think um, on leash for the whole of Tiawa walkway from memory was the proposal. Um, I can't recall what we decided to do in the town. I think it was on leash or was it completely prohibited? Completely prohibited at the moment. Right, so have a look and see that. That's all I can say. I haven't got much else to report, just like Eugene Business as usual. Thank you. Oh, and just before we go, Matt, you haven't got, you haven't had your report there about the um, schedule of meetings yet. No, I was waiting just to put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, so um, if we just go back, um, it was the last agenda item. Uh, 6.4, the schedule of meetings. It's much the same as this year. Uh, still Tuesdays, still at 6 p.m. But it'd be just worth just having a look at the report and see if there's anything that stands out of those dates. Probably the key one for me is around the 8th of February, close to Waitangi. Is it? No. Mm. Just after. Isn't that a public? No, public holidays on the Monday, isn't it? Yeah. February. Oh, yeah. no, so February and March dates are pretty close to Waitangi and Regatta, but mm -hmm. I don't, because it's a Tuesday, I don't think that they're affected. Yeah, cup out. Okay, so we'll roll with those, Matt. Okay, if I can just get a mover and seconder for that, that'd be fantastic. Yep. Uh, Diane and yep. Councillor Patterson. Oh. <laughs> All in favour? Aye. Aye. All right, carried. Okay. Uh, do we just want to run around now, um, board members, um, start with Diane, have you got anything? Um, yeah, I do, actually. Um, some time ago, I logged, <laughs> I logged a job. Um, it is RDG 0342600. Um, slash 21 and what it involves is a safety barrier on Wainara Road between the Hakarimata Bridge and the Derry and the safety barrier was wiped out in May and then the safety barrier on the other side was wiped out in June and I logged two jobs for them and I've periodically emailed about them and I've never received any sort of response over when that might actually have something happen to it. Because I've had another person come and ask me if I know anything about that because they know that I logged the job. So I was just wondering whether or not I could formally get something back about that job. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah. Are they, are they um, safety barriers or um, sightline barriers, um, just white painted boards? They were the, they're the barriers that basically if a car was going to hit the barrier that hit the, um, the crossing, uh, so it's for the pedestrian crossing. Oh, so, in the middle, in the middle. Yeah. yeah, in the middle islands. Yeah. Okay, Kurt, I'm just wondering. We've got a few of those in town that keep getting hit. 
um, where there's a potential to have a few safe hits, um, safe hit poles put in the approach to them, so that might just save us having the cost of renewing them from time to time. The safe hits might be enough to make people realise that they're going to run into something. <laughs> they may not, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll follow that up. Okay. Yeah, as well, add the one that's on River Road that keeps getting taken out too, a couple of them. Yeah, and I think that's one I was thinking of with, we could well and truly do with some safe hit po um, posts. What they are, they're just a plastic um, pole that is actually designed to be to bend and, and stand up again. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, if, yeah, if you can follow that up, Kurt, that'd be good. Okay. The ones on River Road are at the pedestrian crossings, if that helps. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same same issue. Yeah, and same I think that one on Wine Arrow is um, pedestrian crossing. Yep, and there's also the ones in um, Pora 2, which is also part of our area, so um, they need something. That, one of those has been completely wiped out for quite some time, so, yeah, if we could... Because they won't save any pedestrian, it just gives gives people a feeling of a bit of um, security, but it's, yeah, yeah. definitely won't stop a car. Okay. Um, I had one other thing. Oh, yeah. um, so we brought in the changes to the keeping of animals um, by law. And one of the things that was there was about um, horse manure. And I, I, I have a question on that, is that what, um, if there is manure left on the road, who is contacted about that? What's the appropriate channel to deal with that? Is it through roading or something else? Eugene, did you just wave or? Well, I suppose if it is on the road, it'll be roading, yeah. Yeah. Um, on the footpath, if it's on the footpath, generally it'll be roading as well, but depending on where, where it is, if it's in, in the town centre or something like that. So um, I've, I've seen it on the approaches to the Waikato Bridge as well. Um, somebody's been riding a horse around there a while ago. Yep. Mm. Or, can I, sorry, can or, I add five? Can, or you can pick it up and put it in your garden. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, can I add, I know that um, the, there is a group of horses that have moved to Ngarawa here, which has been really awesome to hear the clippity-clops all the time. But these guys, once they return their horses back to um, the five acres opposite the marae, then they go back around picking up um, yeah. what's been left behind. They can't necessarily pick it up while they're out with their horses. So what's worked so far, and they've encouraged people to post up on um, our notice board, and we your notice board, <clears throat> and if one of them's done it, one and the other ones, they they look after each other, and they'll go and clean it up. No worries. So it's yeah. happened so far where they've it's been managed like that, and everybody's been okay with it. Again, okay. yeah. I, I I just know of a, a number of piles that's really getting up there, and I um me and a number of others have pushed things through to roading with the suggestion that maybe in this particular area where it's happening, that some sort of uh, informational notice is given to uh, either the whole road or some in particular people, but they don't pick it up. They leave it. It's still there. <laughs> okay, that's right. I've, I've seen it on uh, Messenger and that um, those guys have been pretty good in tidying mm -hmm. up. They, they put their hand up and, um, and you know, admit it could be them and they go and sort it out. So that is good, Kitty, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, the the uh, the area in question isn't related to the the horses over at the Marae. Yeah, it's a yeah. completely different area. Yeah. Okay. So, Diane, do you know who they are? These people. Yeah. So it might be a good idea that you give us a name and we can write a letter or something. Okay. Mm. I will. We'll save it for, for a conversation after our live is finished, Pierre. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Diane. Is it that all? Yep. Uh, Kerry, have you got anything? Yep. Um, I'm trying to flip some stuff through to Kurt and Eugene. So um, part of the Works and Issues report, um, I just wanted to add a corner of, not the corner, but uh, footpath maintenance. We've got a vacant section that's owned by the marae which is looked after um, but just directly opposite Trish Forsyth's house yep, yep. No, that's totally almost overgrown yeah um, and 
we did put in a service request two years ago with the light. The light's fixed, but the footpath's just getting worse and worse. And I've walked over with my weed eater to tidy it up and gotten the, no, that's not your job. So <laughs> we, you know, that's what we do. But trying to go through the process of council has been very frustrating. So I just thought, again, Kurt, you've advised us to go through the system. We've done that. And when it doesn't work, that's when we use this platform as another way of accessing the services that are required. So corner of Queen Street and River Road, um, that whole, I suppose it's an acre section, the, there is no footpath almost. So I'll flick you through the images by email as reference. Yep. And that's it from me. Thank you. Jack. Yeah, um, I just um, one query. Um, what's happening with the where the old pony club used to be? Um, I see it's been bailed for hay again eventually, and that there's four horses there now. So, what's actually happening with that land? Well, last we heard, Jack, that it wasn't going to be um, just leased out to any person. It had to go to an open kind of uh, tender situation. Um, but the, the staff had to finalise with the dog people, you know, the, um, what did they call them, Eugene? The dog? Um, oh, yeah, dog idiots or something? Was it dog yeah. idiots or dog, dog agility? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. ones that yeah, so. were using the point, they were um, still keeping that option open because they were no longer allowed to use the point. So they were trying to finalise whether the dog people wanted it or not because we had other um, people in the community and a community organisation wanting to lease that and they were told that it had to be an open process, that it had to go out to the market and then the council staff would assess all the applicants. So I don't know whose horses they would be if there are horses grazing there. Yeah, there's four horses and um, they're probably some of the ones that you see actually riding around over the side. Um, they, you know, they make some pretty deep marks, especially when the the, the, the berms are uh, really soft. Yeah. And you know, I just wondered, you know, who do they belong to and do they just suddenly turn up? Who, who actually, I don't know if you or Eugene knows, um, who actually does cut the uh, hay or silage, it's hay this time? I don't know. I don't know. I think um, like they've done up at Tamano Tarangi in the past, sometimes they've they've cut it and bailed it. So I think it could be council or city care doing that. It is it is our it is our grounds, you know, it's our yeah facility. So I'm pretty sure we've had that done and I yeah, I'm not too sure what happens with that. Um, um so yeah. we could follow up Eugene about um yep. with it's Michelle Smart who we've been talking to about this over several years <laughs> so it's just a matter of finding out where it's at yet again so it's probably be about the sixth or eighth time we've asked this question yep yep okay and I'll uh, just be finishing it's very nice to know that we went into orange and not into red for the mm -hmm. traffic light mm. yep uh, Vanessa, have you got anything? Um, I just want to thank whoever put the um, couple of pages on the agenda with who does what around the town. Um, with where it comes to work with between the Alliance of Council and City Care, that's really really helpful in the schedule of times it's been done. Um, the only, only question I've got is, Kurt, is there any um, update on the CRM process? Um, <clears throat> that's about halfway through, mm -hmm. so um, I can bring a, a clearer update probably to the next meeting. It should be just about done by then, hopefully. Great, um, thanks. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> so where it's where it's at now is it's all the issues being identified, um, you know, and suggested fixes, and then it'll be in, into implementation of those fixes. Great. I think we great all great of them as all. Most important out of the six things, they're all most important. So <laughs> there, was, there was no way you could make them one to six. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, Rongo. Oh, yeah, I just you... have a question regarding the Kingitanga um, flags and whose responsibility is it to um, to pull them down or because there's quite a few that are still up and they're fading. So whose responsibility is it to pull uh, them? I think Kingitanga must have put them, or someone from the Marae must have put them up. I no, we're not allowed. Oh. No, so I no don't one, it's council that has to do that. Oh, I they yeah, don't. I just wanted to clarify who who's responsible for putting them up and putting them down because they've been up for quite a while now and they're yeah. fading. Yeah, I, I'm not sure who who does that. Um, obviously, I'd say not one of our contracts, city care or something like that, may be doing it. I can find out. Oh, Nahina's got her, her hand up. Oh, Nahina, I'll be able to answer it. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to jump in right now, but um, I believe Sam had organised that with um, Alliance to get those put up. So I could ask Sam about it if you like. Yep. Choice. Um, but I find I had an ingenious way to put the flags up and down without the $2,500 price tag that comes with <laughs> putting up banners uh, with the Alliance support. Uh, but because it was done without traffic management, it was a hazard, and so they weren't allowed to do it anymore. All right. Okay, um, Janet. Um, if everyone's else finished, I just forgot something I wanted to ask you. So I'm the um, chair of the steering group for the heritage strategy and the board was sent a questionnaire uh, along with um, other boards and the heritage forum um, and we didn't get um, a response from that questionnaire. So it's not too late if you would like to respond. Did you get that, Greg? Um, could be amongst, maybe amongst my emails so yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it is um, a bit in depth, but um, you can just put not applicable to some questions. We we want to know your vis your views on the heritage um, on council and the council's responsibility. If you think it's responsible for built heritage, you know, um, environmental heritage, um, cultural heritage, there's a lot in our um, current strategy and we're reviewing it so we need to hear from people who are not just 100 percent focused on heritage in their daily lives we want to hear from general community people and the community board have varying views so um even if you find it greg and flick yeah. it to every member they could have a good look at it and yep. send it back to um, me or actually I I'm just trying to remember it was a um, it was on the website the Shape Waikato website um, so maybe I could find a, find a, a word copy and send it out yep. you, yeah it makes me wonder if we should be having a workshop um, one more workshop before Christmas uh, what, what do other people think just so we can tidy up some of these Looser ends at the moment. Good do if we if, ever, if it suits everybody, I'm I'm fine with that. Have it with some food. Yeah. Break up. Oh, I was yep. just about to say remember, that. Remember, it's still oh, like Zoom. that one, Kitty. <laughs> it's still Zoom, unfortunately, till there's a policy about face-to-face -face meetings. But you've got you've got a few things to talk about the, those consultations yeah. as well as I really would appreciate some feedback on the heritage strategy and your views on heritage because um, at the moment the majority that we've got feedback for are the heritage forum members and they're focused only on heritage. I'd like yep. to see some wider views. Um, yeah, pro or not, I don't mind, but just so that we've got a balance of input. So I think I think unless it's um unless it's after the thirteenth of December, I think you're oh, stuck. Yeah. Oh, so the 
the um, choose. Well, we actually we can meet um, in small groups anyway um, as a workshop outside. Outside. So we uh, can meet well, we at can public the facility, yeah, like yeah. a cafe or something, because they have guidelines already in place. Yeah, and the community just house is, suggestion. Yeah. We could use the community house, probably, Vanessa, couldn't we? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah. um, I just want to check with Kurt that because we're pretty strict on what we're going to be careful with. Does that sound all right, Kurt, or not? Yep. So in two weeks' time, if the, and we have a bit of a, um, everyone bring a plate along and we'll um, have a, a bit of a wind-up for the year as well as um, discussing some of these items. How's that suit everyone? Mm -hmm. So I think that would be the, is it the 14th. Um, I don't dare touch anything at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, so it would be really good if people um, looked at things in advance and didn't wait till the workshop to read it yep. so that you came along with some, some opinions um, because otherwise it'll take all night. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Short and sweet. Yep. Um, um, Mr. Chair, just um, one other thing um, I, I forgot to mention was... Um, We've probably all seen it, but there's been some comms come out around um, refuse collections being a bit earlier, starting from seven. Yep. Um, so it's nothing um, that's been changed in the contract or anything like that. It's just probably um, Metro Waste and that readjusting their, um, their schedules and their run sheets. So um, like when we have... Um, so. Like now, I mean, I'd be getting out, putting mine out at 7, 7.30, but it doesn't get picked up till 5 o'clock or even yeah. later. Um, but, you know, just as long as everybody's aware that that's, that's what's happening, um, your rubbish might get picked up a bit earlier if they've changed that schedule. And the other thing too is uh, I had somebody ring me the other day about they've been putting their cardboard out a certain way, et cetera, and then all of a sudden it was um, um, not picked up. But what it was was they had... They'd been always putting it out and putting it out wrong, uh -huh, and people were picking it up. And it's not, it's not when this when this happens, it's not council changing anything. Um, you can't go and change it. There's a contract there with the supplier with Metro Waste, and they they themselves get a bit casual. And depending on who's on the run, you know the guys on the back of the truck, etc. And I think every now and then, from their their managers or something, they get just a reminder and they. Come down a bit hard on their staff so then their staff start doing it and so as individuals we get a bit of a shock and think oh my god what's what what's this change it's not that it's a change it's just that they're a bit more stricter on how they're picking stuff up so yep. just a bit of fyi really yep. yeah i actually got um because it was sent out as an email to us with the um but the format it was sent i couldn't copy it and put it into a narrow here notice board so I, I actually emailed back and he sent me a copy that I could do it straight in so it's quite important yeah. if they want us to pass these things on they need to make it easy for us rather than each of us having to pick it up um, we don't all have um, fresh, professional level of PDF and that sort of thing yeah. so um, yeah really when they send out these things they need to make sure that it's easy for us to pick it up and place it on on Facebook pages, it's probably our major one here. So, yeah. yeah. So it's on the Facebook page, and it was, I shared it the day it was published on uh, WDC Facebook page. So, anything that comes up on there that's in relation to our town, I shared immediately to our um, page. Sometimes, too, the emails come out before the actual public knows. So, we've just got to be aware that there could be like what's happened previously, we could be jumping the gun before the actual announcement's been made. But yep. the best way to do it is wait for it till it's publicly out on either their website or Facebook page before we publish it so that people, if they have questions, they go directly back to the original post. Yeah, in this case, it was sent to us via email two days before the change was being made. Well, actually, less than 48 hours, so... It was like, we need to get this straight back out. So, um, if, if, yeah, staff need to be mindful that, you know, they're passing it on to us. They need to keep it easy, you know, relatively easy for us to work. So, 
I, and right. I think I think with that one, it came through pretty short too to council from the contractor. Yeah. So that they're doing that. So you know, some of them may be a week away, but when it came out, we were just a couple <coughs> of days away. So yeah, it's just them. Now, have I missed anyone? Right. Well, I think that pretty much winds it up for the night. Um, I just got okay. one more to add oh. because we're not going to see our awesome support team till next year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you guys on the other side. Absolutely. Enjoy yep. your holiday breaks, yeah. everyone. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, mm. Matt. Thank you very much, guys. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay.